This review is on the Hunter fan that you can buy at Costco. I picked it up for about $129. And it's a ceiling fan. Comes with a remote. Here's the remote over here. Um, not an easy thing to install. A lot of these fans, when you buy fans at the uh, HD, the fans are put together. Like you see over here, you buy the fan, you uh, attach it to your uh, light box on the ceiling, the power box, and then you're done. This fan comes in pieces. So if you think it's going to be an easy install, definitely not. I had somebody install it. I'm glad I did. I watched what they went through to do it. It is not an easy thing to do, but it is a great deal for a 54-inch blade for 129. It's an incredible deal. Let me show you what it is now. There it is. That's the fan. Let's turn on the light. Okay, we've got three different speeds here on this remote. The remote turns the fan on and off. The remote turns the light on and off, and the remote has a low speed. I'm going to put on the low speed so you can see, and you can also hear. It's going to take a few seconds for it to uh, build up to speed. And after uh, you finish watching this video, hopefully you'll do a thumbs up, a subscribe, a like. Go to my channel page if you want. Click on support this channel and donate something if you want to help me out. That's about the speed of the slow. Inside the fan, there is a, inside the light part, you can take the dome off and there's a switch in there to adjust it for forward or reverse. Some fans have that built in on the remote. This one doesn't. This one, you have to open up the fan if you want to change that. This is up in a loft. The advantage of having it turn counterclockwise is that it pulls the air from the ceiling downward and that was the goal to make sure the heat went lower so that uh, I could have heat in the whole room instead of just going up to the ceiling. If you want this, it also blows air. I feel, when, when I'm sitting down here, I can feel air blowing on me. Let me click this onto medium. Um, if you have it going clockwise, which is opposite of what this is, which is counterclockwise, if you have it going clockwise, it's uh, meant to bring the air upward, but you really don't need that in a loft. As you can tell, you can't even hear this fan. Okay, now I'm going to put it on the high speed. It's building up. You can see it. Uh, you don't hear the fan motor. What you hear is the circulation. You hear the air. You hear the, the blades breaking through the, the air. And the camera didn't like that. It started to fade out because it didn't see any light. So you can see it's fairly quick. It's fairly fast. It's very powerful. It's a great fan. Again, this comes in lots of pieces. You see up at the very top, that's one piece. Um, this thing has got parts so that you can mount it like it is now. You can mount it on an angled ceiling. You can mount it f almost flush with the ceiling. This is an eight foot high ceiling and it's using the standard downspout over there. Uh, if you want it to be higher up towards the ceiling, you have a shorter spout you can use. It required wiring and an outlet box to be installed in the ceiling. This fan is extremely heavy. When you pick the box up, it is extremely heavy. You do not want to buy something like this and just mount it carelessly on a standard ceiling uh, light box because the, it will fall, it will probably damage something or kill you. So you do not want to do that. You, uh, I'm going to do a drawing now so you can see what's going on. But what I did is I had them wire, originally I had two uh, switches in here. I put a double switch in. One of them is so that I have control of the fan there it is the fan shutting off now so you want to make sure that you have uh, 
I had additional switches. Originally I had a double switch. I ended up putting a gang switch here, so I was able to use one switch strictly to turn the fan on. And you can see here that if I turn that switch off, the light goes off and the fan goes off. Everything else is controlled by the remote control. Hopefully this is going to make some sense to you. Imagine that you were looking into the ceiling. This is a four inch hole that you've drilled into the ceiling. You can buy a hole saw if you need to or you can do that with uh, a saw, a drywall saw. Imagine these are two studs. You can go down to a place like HD and buy an adjustable fan support rod and what this thing does is you reach into the hole, you position the, the rod in there and then you tighten it or you, you start to turn the rod in different directions and it will expand this rod so that it will jam itself into the side of each stud. That way you will have something very strong and secure that will support the very heavy weight of this fan. And then you, it also comes with uh, brackets so that you can install an outlet. And you would install the outlet that could handle, not the outlet, the uh, junction box. And you can see these little things over here. These would be resting on the inside of the ceiling on the drywall so that it positions everything the right way, the right height, so that this junction box does not hang below the opening of the ceiling so it's perfectly level. And then what you would do is you would mount the fan directly to the junction box. It's got uh, a bracket and you would screw the thing in and then everything would be supported by those two screws and it would take the weight and distribute it on this rod between these two studs. There's another way to do it and that's how mine was done. And it was definitely a lot easier. I didn't really understand what was going on at the time. But what they did is they... I measured out where the stud was, so we knew exactly where the stud was. So what he did is he drilled a four inch hole, which allowed him to be able to get in there and attach a junction box, strictly a junction box, not, a, not one that's able to withstand all the weight of the fan, just a junction box that was drilled the hole, put the junction box, rooted into the stud. It was definitely secure, no doubt about that, it was secure and then routed the wires. I'll show you how that was done in a minute. Routed the wires over towards the light switch. But what they did then is there's a big brack, there's a big uh, plate. And what he did is he took this plate and centered it over the stud and drilled the plate into the stud. So rather than having to go through the putting that uh, putting this whole thing in there and trying to level everything out, all he did is he took the plate, which is underneath that uh, cone-shaped piece, that shiny piece. I'll show you again in a minute. He took the plate and placed it on the ceiling. Drilled four holes. This is this this plate is more in the center, but it really doesn't matter. It was secure into the studs with three-inch screws it is going absolutely nowhere ever. Um, he used an impact uh, drill to drive the screws in there three inches so you've got three long screws holding all the weight nothing was being weighted down on the junction box. Now what they did is they had to uh, route a wire from the junction box across the ceiling had to go all the way down over to the wall over there. You can see the light switch, I think. There it is. So let me explain what he did. And before I do that, this is the, uh, underneath here is where that plate is. The plate is screwed directly into the stud going this way, and then the uh, down pole is put in there, and the whole thing's assembled. The remote is put in there, the wiring for the remote. There is a lot involved. The instructions are not easy to understand. Uh, I've done stuff like this before, and I looked at the instructions, and I was able to put ha parts of it together, and then I just left it for the installer to do the rest, because it's very involved. 
but it is doable. So what was done is wire was routed all the way up the ceiling, pulled through with a, a cable uh, wire, wire snake, and then right at the very top underneath the wall, a hole was put into the ceiling over here so that they were able to drill down through the stud, which the cross stud, which goes this way, and the wire was routed all the way down to the switch. Now, we had to get the wire from here over to the ceiling. There are studs every, or there are joists every 16 inches, huge joists going all the way across the ceiling. I don't know if this is to code or if it's legal, but what was done, and it's a brilliant idea, when you look at the ceiling, you really don't see any, you don't see any damage. Um, let me show you what was done. I measured with a uh, stud finder and I knew exactly where all the studs were. I measured the, I was able to find the center. The most important thing, I was able to find the edges. And that made things a lot easier. <clears throat> what we did, and again, I don't know if it's the code, but uh, it worked. Nobody is ever going to drill in the ceiling ever. Nobody's going to ever install a fan or lighting in here, so um, it really didn't matter. What we did is used a one inch speed bit on the drywall of the ceiling. A one inch speed bit drilled over here, drilled over here, drilled over here, over here, over here, over here, over here. So what you have now is all these holes in the ceiling and then since this is 5 8 inch thick drywall, 5 8 5 5 8 of an inch thick. It's pretty darn thick. That's not even it's even thicker. Um so you've got a lot of room here. So what we did after this hole was drilled and this hole was drilled is took a scoring knife. You could use a screwdriver or a whatever knife you want to use, and just cut out or gouged out the ceiling, five-eighths of an inch of the ceiling, until we were able to see the stud. Once we saw the stud, we just took the wire and shoved it down. This is imagine we're coming from the switch. We shoved it down the hole and then up the hole and then down the hole, and then up the hole, and down the hole, and this sounds obscene, up the hole. Okay, so what ends up happening is you've got this nice big gaposis in the ceiling now. You route your wire through there. This is the stud over here. You route your wire through there, and it's completely pushed in because the wire is very thin, probably a, an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch. So you've got all this extra space inside that uh, inside the gap over here that you gouged out between the two holes. You've got all this space. So the wire goes through here, used a staple to staple it down, this is the right the, uh, the wire staples, and then went in there with uh, drywall compound and patched this whole thing up. So I'm not sure again if it's legal. According to the electrical code, the wire was safely routed all the way through all of these. And then when it gets into here, it comes down, goes into the outlet box, and then the fan plate gets mounted over here. Connect the fan to the wire, to the junction box, to the power over there, and that's how the whole thing was wired. Um, either way, if you want to do it this way, or if you want to go in there and start drilling through joists, it's up to you how you want to do it. Um, if this is illegal, then don't do it because I don't want you to do anything that's wrong or naughty. And if you uh, like this idea of mounting it this way, which really is an e which I feel much happier about because everything, the whole fan is mounted with three inch screws. I feel a lot more secure than knowing, even though it's safe and it's, it's uh, rated for that, than knowing that the fan is being held by two very thick, heavy duty screws and that's all that's holding it. So I like this idea a lot better. Again, it comes with an incredible amount of parts. It comes with a weight balance kit so that 
if the fan is not balanced properly and it's rocking around, you can put a weight on. It tells you how to put on a little adhesive weight to balance everything out. And it's a nice cherry wood color and it has uh, LED bulbs inside there so it doesn't use a lot of power. That's the uh, airflow, 5310 cubic feet per minute, uses 64 watts, not with the lights on. Not too expensive, 64 watts, uh, it's much less than a 100 watt bulb. 83 cubic feet per minute airflow efficiency, what does it say? I'm trying to find the weight, if I can find the weight. LED lights, like I said, reversible plates, cherry or dark walnut. It's got the remote that I showed you. It's got the glass with the switch inside there to do the reverse of the motor if you want to. If you want the specs, hopefully you can read that on HD. Those are the dimensions and the specs of this thing. Comes with a uh, three speeds as I showed you, reversible motor if you need that. Uh, again, you can mount it on angled ceiling, short mount, tall mount. What else do we have here? Some other info in case you want to see that uh, for dimensions. Trying to find the weight on here, which I don't seem to see. And I can't find the weight, but if you're interested, go look it up. But when you pick this thing up from the store, extremely heavy. Uh, again, if you're really good with uh, drywall patching and drilling holes in a ceiling and routing Romex cable through joists or uh, uh, studs, do it yourself. Otherwise, you're probably going to have to hire somebody to do this thing. Well worth the money. I'm glad I did it. It's very quiet. It has a lot of power. Uh, it is a good quality fan at a really good price, and the 54-inch blades, very cool compared to some of the things that you buy at the other stores, which uh, are 50 or 52 or 48, and they cost a lot more, and they break down. So this was a, a great deal. Yes, I recommend buying this thing. Uh, hopefully you like my videos. Uh, do a thumbs up, subscribe, like if you want to help me out again. Go to the channel page, click on donate, and uh, put some dinero in there to help me out. Make sure you watch all my other awesome videos. And that is the end of this. Time to post it. Enjoy your fan. And here's a funny one. Stay cool. Ho, ho, ho.